you're actually a very, very good guy and a very good gentleman. What was it that hit the tripwire that you had to stand up to a 70-year-old guy and, and basically throw down right there? If it hadn't been for the, the moderator and maybe J.D. Vance, we, we, you, there, you two guys would have gone at it. And Gibbons is an old Irishman, so there, there, would, have been, there would have been a couple blows thrown. So, but, and here's my point. You're known as a fighter. Even the people who don't like you say you're known as a fighter. Why make a big display of it at that? Well, I wasn't making a display. I was standing up for military men and women throughout our country. You know, Gibbons says that, you know, people who serve in the, in the Marine Corps like me or in the Army or the Navy, the Air Force didn't uh, you know, have a real job. And it's complete baloney. Uh, on top of that, when I was in Iraq, Mike Gibbons was shipping jobs to China. Josh Mandel showed up on the war room with Steve Bannon. And Steve Bannon, as you could probably hear there, was trying to tell him after his near fight with 70 year old Mike Gibbons in their primary battle at their debate. Even Steve Bannon's like, hey, bro, uh, that's not a good look. You might want to tone it down. Now, as you can see, Josh Mandel did not take that advice and said, no, 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 bro. No, no, you see what he said about me and my Marine brothers, which he didn't, but fine. They're both, they're both garbage. Um, Steve Bannon did try again. But uh, uh, before you try it again, though, I want to remind you guys of this fight that I just talked about. Let's let's watch a little bit of that from yesterday again. You let's may not understand this because you've I never been in the fight. No, you don't. I do. You've never been in the I private sector it. in your entire right, life. I've worked, sir. Josh, squat. Josh. About Josh. Two chores in Iraq. Don't tell me I haven't worked. Don't tell me I haven't worked. You, you don't know squat. It's okay, right? You don't know squat. Two tours in Iraq. Don't tell me I haven't worked. Back off, buddy. You're gonna you back off. Oh, my God. Michael, I never had a laugh. Let's sit down. Never. Guys, watch. Guys. Yeah. Watch. We'll square it away with the wrong dude. Man. No, no, you you're dealing with the wrong guy. You watch what happens. You watch what happens. Anyways, uh, so that's what looked so bad to Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon tried a, a second time to get Josh to realize and maybe tone it down. So if remember. Portman is your mentor, at least when Port Portman is in the audience, you say he's your mentor, would you commit to toning this down and keep the content as hot as you can, saying, hey, you, you made this money, but to tone down the, the personal animosity so that people can actually hear these debates and hear what people have to say. And if you disagree with the guy, chop him up then. Would you commit to not having these things throw down into some type of physical confrontation? Well, first of all, there's no personal animosity. Um, facts are facts. And I think the voters of Ohio have a right to know that there's a guy running for the US Senate, Mike Gibbons, who made his millions off of taking American jobs and selling them. When you say this, hey, I got that, I got that. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but you say no personal animosity. You got, if you had not been separated, don't you believe that you two guys would have come to blows? It would look pretty obvious. I, being an Irishman and being in enough bars in my life, it looked like it was about to be a throw. It was a throwdown. It looked like it's about to come to blows. Would, do, do, if you hadn't been broken up, would, would you guys not have gotten into a physical confrontation? Because you weren't backing down and he wasn't backing down. I, I don't know where it's going. You know, I have no idea where it would have gone. One thing I do know is this race is materializing into a, into a two-man race. I'm taking the other path, Steve, going there to be reinforcements, like I said, for fighters like Jim Jordan, Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, and others. And I'm a fighter, man. Steve Bannon is still trying to figure this out, how he can tell this idiot, hey, I'm trying to give you some advice by asking you, calm down, maybe tone it down. That was strike two. Is he going to strike out? Let's watch again. Okay, and I can anticipate, let's assume this is the pregame for tonight's uh, rally. I, I, I assume that you're going to confront Gibbons on his record on China tonight. Is that a, is that a dead certainty? I'm, I'm not uh, dialing anything down for tonight. You know, if anything, we're going to dial it up. Josh uh, Mandel, thank you for joining us here in the war room. <laughs> Whatever thought went through Bannon's head, he's like, okay, I'm done. I, I, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't anymore with this guy. What were your thoughts? I mean, okay, Steve, trying to take the high ground, Mr. Let's kill the Biden presidency right. in the cradle, like on January 6th. You know, it's, oh yeah, violence, political violence is great when it's against Democrats, but it's when it's Republican against Republican. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, come on, talk on my show, The War Room. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, now you don't like violence. I mean, in some ways, Josh Mandel, like I, you know, salute him in a language he can understand. Um, for kind of just being honest, yeah, this is what the Republican Party has sown. So now you're reaping it. You got dudes like that who are stepping up to other candidates.
suck it. Like that's what it is. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's great. I don't think it makes anyone look good. But Republicans will respond to it. I don't know. Well, maybe Mandel's playing this right. That's the thing. I was saying this when the first fight was happening, and how he thinks this is now a, 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 the Trumpian part of the party, which is the whole thing now. Basically, um, so now you have to make sure you have confrontations at every turn possible. We talked about how he came after uh, Morgan Harper, then he went after uh, Mike Gibbons here. JD Vance stood up and tried to get himself involved, and now as he continues on, on he takes every opportunity he can to talk about how he's going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm, I'm going to fight for the Jim Jordans and the Marjorie Taylor Greens and, and the Matt Gates of the world. Yeah, I'm going to be another one of those idiots. So he thinks this is his ticket, and I don't know. Those guys are in. Maybe the ticket is that. Um, but Steve. Uh, a band and apparently doesn't think so, and he's not there for any of this conversation. He just doesn't care. It's fine. We'll see where it goes. I, I, I hope it goes nowhere. Um, mm. And there was a fight again. I mean, it wasn't just a fight. There was a debate again last night, which apparently there were no fireworks. So maybe he did heed that advice, or maybe his spokesperson said so. Who knows?